Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amudan Shaktivel. In this video, we're going to see another amazing library called Test Data Supplier. You all might be uh, used, you know, this data provider in TestNG, right? So this particular library, uh, you know, solves few of the problems with the data provider in TestNG and also adds some additional features that TestNG data provider does not have. We will see that in detail in this particular video. Let's get started without wasting much time. So for example, you know, in, in test ng data provider, we always need to uh, return data type. Uh, you know, the method return type should be always two dimensional object array or iterator of object array, right? But this test data supplier um, can help you to return different data types. For example, you can return any of the collection. You can also return list of integers, tuple as well. You can also return stream and stream x integer array or string array or whatever long array you want written, right? You might be wondering what is StreamX. Again, StreamX is another brilliant wrapper for your Stream API. Java Stream API is powerful, but StreamX is even more powerful with a lot of um, features uh, more than the Stream API, right? So we will see about the StreamX in, into the later point of time, but for now we will discuss on the test data supplier itself. The main advantage what I see in test automation space is it can help you to read external files like CSV, JSON, and YAML, right? In test automation, that too, particularly in, in Selenium or your REST issued, we, we can use a lot of JSON files, right? In JSON, uh, in REST issued, particularly, we have we have to drive our test from a JSON templates, right? So in those cases, this might come really, really handy, and we'll see how this can, uh, you know, uh, solve a lot of problems that we uh, have while reading the JSON files, CSV files, or YAML files. Again, it also has some additional features from, uh, apart from what TestNG data provider can provide, something like a transposing of the matrix, and then a flat map and the indices. We'll, we'll discuss all these features in detail, right? So let's go to the IntelliJ workspace. And uh, I have taken three uh, use cases. We'll cover them one by one. So the first test is, is this how we normally use, right? So we have a very simple test uh, that, uh, that uses a data provider to supply data. For example, this data provider returns a two dimensional object array and each of these uh, you know, elements um, are stored in each of these indexes, right? Zero, zero, one, zero, and two, zero indexes. Again, we all know that the first dimension here is responsible uh, for, you know, it's it's equal to the number of times our test will run. And this particular thing is, is equal to the number of parameters we pass to the uh, test method, right? And here in this case, it will run the test three times and each time it will supply one, one data, right? Yes, and we are trying to just print the value. We are not doing anything more than that. It's a very, very simple test, right? So let's also try to use a uh, data supplier instead of data provider. It's very, very easy, guys. Just change this to data supplier. That's it. And this basically comes from an external library. So I will also cover what is that particular library. So you have to uh, add this particular dependency uh, into your project. So this is from iwork.github.ss.carol and test data supplier. And the version I'm using is 1.9.6. And it is highly compatible with 7.4.0. This particular library is evolving for each of the TestNG versions. So if TestNG is updated to latest version, these guys are making enough changes. I have already checked their GitHub code. A lot of people started to use this particular repository. Soon after this video, I hope uh, I hope many people will start to use this amazing library. Yes, now let's go here and uh, let's try to import this particular uh, data supplier. And now you can also use this, but apart from that, you know, you can optimize this particular piece of code, right? So let's say I want to return one, two, and three. Instead, what I could do directly is I can directly use stream dot off, right? And I can pass one, two, and three, okay? Which is actually not possible in case of uh, our conventional data provider because data provider will not allow you to return streams, right? So, but this allows you to return stream of integers so that you don't have to really worry about, uh, you know, two dimensional arrays and stuff like that. It will still work absolutely fine, right? So let's try to run it. So this is running for three times. For first time it took one, second time two, second, third time three, right? What else features? I'm this is not a big deal. I could have done this with array start as list and then convert to an object array. Yes, absolutely, that is possible. But you know, with the help of data supplier, you have an option to choose which 
indices you want to pass for example this data has three indices this is zeroth index first index second index right suppose in my case i want to pass only uh, the zero comma second index right now the test will run only two times this is really cool right you with just defining a parameter you add additional features to your test right this is really really cool and not only that you also have an option to transpose the matrix so transpose equal to true which means this one two and three will be supplied as a you know let's say you have a three by one matrix so far right so the test will run three times and each time it will feed one data but when we transpose this matrix it becomes one by three right and now it will feed three data so one two three will be feeded here okay and uh, you know it will run only one time for example i'm just printing a you can also print b and c now this will test will run only one time with three parameters feeded to the test method so you can also transpose the matrix this might be really helpful if you are reading from excel sheets and all that uh, in those cases if you want to do the transpose you don't have to uh, confuse yourself with i and j prepare the matrix just do the transpose it will it will get the job for you right and not only this right so it also supports streamx right so streamx is is again the wrapper for your stream and this is also has a lot of features right so with streamx you can use filter okay instead of just filter you can also use filter by this is coming from streams streamx and it also has a lot of other features guys okay so you can basically um, collapse it you can do head tail you can do map it you can peek it no there are a lot of additional features comes from streamx this is default supported in a data supplier which is not actually supported by test engine data provider yeah you can use leverage all these features let's go to another interesting use case this is very important in test automation so we want to uh, read some uh, files right so uh, let's say i want to read something from the test data not json so normally what we do we use jackson object mapper and then we map it to list of users for example this is the test data dot json file i am speaking about let's say i want to drive my test with three set of test data this is first set second test second set third set right normally how we will do we use jackson to map it and here i am mapping it to list of user user is a, a custom created pojo so if you notice we have the string username and string password and we have uh, at the rate data from lombok which will construct the getters uh, all the necessary components right and yeah it also implements true string and everything right so now if you have this it will absolutely work fine so this will basically run the test uh, three times one for each set of data so now it is telling it cannot create it because we don't add we have it added that let's go to the user class and add the default constructor i missed to add that no args constructor and uh, let's try to run it again this is how we run it right so every time it will run with one set of values so if you notice first time admin admin second time is a square old password best password but let's say i want i don't want to write this logic this is really nice right i need to use new type reference i need to uh, you know tell the exact path where this is whole thing is located you know this might i have to spend some efforts to write this code but what if i use data supplier again guys data provider can also return data object array okay it also supports it in your case if it is throwing some errors please go to uh, uh, inspections okay in the preferences you go to inspections here and uh, in the inspections you can search for data provider okay in the data provider you can basically disable all the data providers here in your case it will be enabled here please disable them okay then it will not throw any errors but testing data provider also supports object array okay so now i'm going to replace this with data supplier this time and instead of writing the code myself what i'm going to do Uh, there is a method called as use which is um, a static method um, that takes we need to tell what kind of parser we, uh, reader we want to use this is a json reader right they have implemented the logic themselves so we don't have to write the logic and this method is basically coming from uh, test data reader so it's a static method i do the static input so okay this is fine okay using this json reader dot class you read try to read the json file and map it okay with target i want to map it to user dot class this is the pojo i need to map it to and where is the file located the source file is located in the 
resources folder right so if it is in the resources folder you don't have to give the full path you just need to tell data test data dot json it will take the path so i don't have that logic i need to don't have to write the exact path and also i can just tell read okay now this guy is going to return me stream x okay so i'm going to do a stream x this is going to return stream x of users okay every time it's going to return stream x of users okay i'll do the import now every time it's going to return user array but this time i haven't written the logic myself the json reading code is taken care by the data supplier itself i just need to tell to which class i want to map so there is a username password here just go ahead and map it to user class it will for the username and password that's it guys so this should definitely work let's go here and check whether this is working this is really cool right so you are not writing the logic yourself this is not only the json file if you have a csv file like this let's say you have a csv file like this you can also read it but before covering the csv file i forgot to mention that if you have some you know this json file can locate in your local machine or it can be in any remote repository as well for example in my case if i basically have it in some place around here which is globally accessible so this also you can map it so let's say this is an animal object okay it's a list of animal objects okay then i can map it easily so the file basically is located in the remote location okay and not in my local nothing changes just change the mapping file okay just say animal dot class guys again animal is is what i have already created okay this is a then this will return me list of animal right so stream of animal again guys with stream x you get lot of options to filter okay if i want to filter uh, based on something okay let's say i want to filter if only the name is equal to meow c i have to run it then i can add this and then for each of the entry i get i need to uh, get the name okay i have to get the name and i am going to check whether this is containing this okay now this will basically help me to filter it okay you you tend to leverage a lot of stream features now you can skip first two values okay or you can limit to just supply only two values okay you can control a lot of things okay with the help of stream which is not actually possible in case of uh, test engine data provider yes it is possible indirectly but we need to write a lot of code but here this is really easy right so now this is running from the remote location i'm okay there is a problem we need to map this to animal okay and let's try to run it again so, so ignore i have named the reference as animal but the variable name is still user but yeah this still works okay so this is how the actual animal class looks like it's a it's a very simple class uh, string species and then it's it has also having food food type and this is how the food type also looks like okay it has a string array of likes and dislikes yeah i have already created these pojos just to save some time not only this you can also make this to read csv file csv file just a minute so with the help of csv reader so we just need to tell csv reader that's it no change okay i want to read csv reader and map it to user dot class and here also it will become user and here it will become user right right and the location is basically present in my resources folder so test data dot csv again i have to open the test data dot csv it looks like this okay so this is your header it will ignore this it will run the test for three times with these test of test data right here i have limited to two so it will run only two times okay so you can basically uh, easily read from csv so this is not ac actually possible with the help of data provider right we need to write lot of logic to read from csv this is now your life is made easy right same way it's also support yaml reader your question might be whether it support excel guys if you have an excel just save it as an dot csv file okay then you can use this otherwise you can also use zero cell a library that i have already covered to uh, to read from excel and then map it to uh, this and you can use it with data supplier for now they don't have a default reader mechanism for excel sheets i have raised a feature request to their github repo hopefully they will create it soon right and what not what what else it can do 
right? So we have covered in uh, transpose, we have also covered indices. And apart from that, it also supports flat map, okay? Uh, flat map may be really unique to you, but just try to understand. Let's say you have a data provider that returns object array, and what it's doing, we have a stream that is having these values. What I'm doing, I'm for each of these, I'm creating a new string array, okay? For, for each of these, I'm creating a new string array. So it becomes something like this. So the first index in the object array is a string array containing these two values. Next string array will have automation and automation test, right? Next one will have testing mini bytes and testing mini bytes test, right? So now every time it will re return a string array, okay? But suppose I want to split this, okay? I want to flat map this to two different parameters. First, let's try to run it and check whether every time it is returning string array. So this is basically telling uh, get data. I need to tell correct name. So every time it is returning a string array, but for some reasons, I don't want to feed a string array itself. Rather, I want to split this string array into, because this string array is having two, com two elements, right? One is zeroth index, one is first index. I want to split this into string data, comma, string data one. Okay, I know I need to flat map them, right? So is there any way we can do it? Okay, uh, yes, we, we have an easy way with the help of, uh, so what I can going to do, I'll command this out. I will, I have already written the code. Instead of doing, writing all this code myself, I have just done only one thing, just to add a flat map equal to true. Everything else remains the same, just, instead of converting to array, which I don't have to do because data supplier supports stream of string array, okay? Now I just mentioned flap map equal to true on the top. So this will feed two different parameters, okay? So let's try to run it. Okay, now this is telling, hey, there is no get data. So let's name it as get data and let's try to run it again. So it's a very, very simple code, okay? So yeah, so this looks absolutely fine, right? So this is now feeding two, two strings, okay? Instead of one string array, it is splitting the string array into two different. Again, this is not just two. If you want three parameters, yeah, you can also split it with the help of flat map equal to true, which will be really hard if you, if you don't use, uh, you know, data supplier. If you want to achieve this use case, it will be really difficult, but overall, uh, one big advantage is you don't have to write all these logic, CSV reading logic or JSON reading logic yourself. These guys have already written it. You just make a, create a POJO, map it accordingly and use it in your code. This is how easy it is to work with uh, data supplier. And more importantly, it also forces you to use StreamX, which is again another brilliant library, which you have to, which you may, you may think it is an added knowledge for you. Right. I hope I have made some sense today. We will see in another great video, uh, another interesting topic. Thank you guys. You all have a very good day. Bye.